Is it just me or does it feel like every new stadium and arena being built has more and more luxury suites and amenities? I mean, look at these things. And yeah, they look amazing, but those aren't the seats you and I are in. I'm in the 300 level at MetLife, freezing my ass off and yelling at the Giants to run the ball more. But why? Why does every new stadium have so many luxury suites and amenities? Every major sport has them, MLB, NBA, NHL, but the NFL has the most. And there's one very specific reason why. You could kind of say the first luxury suite was in Rome's Colosseum. Special boxes at the north end were reserved for the Emperor, where they got the best view of Russell Crowe. Are you not entertained? I mean, the arena. But this, this was the real trailblazer, the Houston Astrodome. It opened in 1965 and was nicknamed the eighth wonder of the world. The saying, everything is bigger in Texas, never applied to anyone more than it applied to Houston judge and former mayor, Roy Hofheinz. Roy's inspiration for the design of the Astrodome was the Colosseum. And in the same way the Colosseum showcased the extravagance and grandeur of the Roman Empire, he wanted the Astrodome to be Houston's unmistakable landmark. And it was. It was the world's first ever multi-purpose dome stadium, first to have AstroTurf, which is why it's called AstroTurf, first to have an animated scoreboard, and clearly, Roy liked luxury. He had gold telephones in various sizes. He ashed his cigars into a bunch of gold baseball glove ashtrays. He built an apartment for himself in the dome that might be the gaudiest thing you've ever seen. It had a bowling alley, a shooting range, a barber shop, a bar, and a chapel. He once said about the Coliseum, and I found out too that the emperor and the bigwigs all sat at the top of the stadium. And so, the Astrodome sported 53 private rooms that they called skyboxes, rented out on five-year lease agreements. The skyboxes became the early model for luxury suites, but they also kinda sucked. They were above the upper deck, and there was a hallway that separated the seating from the suites. So the suites had no view of the field. But the Astrodome did prove that there was a demand for a luxury experience at stadiums. And so it slowly started becoming implemented into stadium design. But it wasn't until the 1980s when the scale of business potential was realized. In an effort to bring the Super Bowl to Miami, Dolphins owner Joe Robbie made a plan to build a new stadium for $115 million. But Papa Joe didn't have $115 million. So he focused on preemptively leasing luxury suites and club seats on 10-year contracts. He used the revenue from those leases to privately fund his stadium build, something that had never been done before. By the time they broke ground on construction, they had sold $8 million worth of luxury suites and club seat contracts. The stadium had a wide array of luxury suites, 216 to be exact, plus added amenities like VIP parking, more food options, in-seat service, and access to a private lounge. And the financials were revolutionary. The Dolphins paid off their stadium debt in 10 years. For context, the Rams were in St. Louis for 20 years, and they left behind $36 million of stadium debt when they left for LA. So now owners realized there were huge earnings to be made by tapping into the pockets of businesses and rich sports fans. In 88, the luxe trend made it to the NBA. The Palace of Auburn Hills opened with 180 luxury suites, which people thought were way too many until they were all leased consistently for 450 grand a year. The success of the Palace made it a pioneer of the modern style NBA and NHL arenas that you see today. New Comiskey Park in Chicago proved the trend would work in baseball as well. But again, none could fit more than the NFL. The league has the highest average number of suites per venue at 156.94, more than double what the MLB has. Yeah, they have the biggest stadiums out of all the major sports, but that's not the only reason why. Historically, under NFL collective bargaining agreements, there are a number of revenue streams that get shared across all 32 teams. Things like national TV deals, merch sold through NFL.com, revenue from NFL Sunday Ticket, the NFL Network, and 40% of ticket sales are all shared. But then there's retained revenue, or don't touch my f money revenue. And that's kept by the individual teams. It includes 60% of ticket sales, stadium naming rights, local broadcast revenues, sponsorships, concessions, parking, and luxury suite revenues which is massive. They're obviously much more expensive than a regular ticket, and also suites, club seats, and lounges can all be sponsored. Additional revenue for the teams. Like the BNY Mellon Club at Levi Stadium, the AT&T Lofts at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, the United Club at Soldier Field, the list just goes on and on. And the teams can rent out suites on a multi-year contract, five, seven, nine years, and that locks in revenue for a number of years, though they're not as common these days. More common now are the per-game suite rentals, which they can actually 
charge more for because it's a one-off. I found a ticket in the highest section at SoFi Stadium, week two against the 49ers for $185 after taxes and fees. That same week, the Terrace Suite is up for grabs for $41,000 and that doesn't even include alcohol. The price of that Terrace Suite could cover 221 tickets in the highest section. And yeah, the Terrace Suite is technically 44 tickets, but I don't care. How many big wigs are filling that thing to capacity? And now the luxury experience is evolving. It's not just about premium seating, good food, and the best sight lines anymore. The new focus is experience and access. More and more NFL stadiums are offering field level suites, which give you access to the field during warmups. If you have a suite at Arrowhead Stadium, you can get access to the post game press conference. In Dallas, you can watch the Cowboys walk in and out of the tunnel from the locker room to the field. And now the trend is going international. Tottenham Hotspur has the H Club, which has a one time fee of 30,000 pounds and a season fee of 15,000 pounds per seat. A platinum box at Etihad Stadium, where Manchester City plays, will run you about 25,000 pounds. For the average fan, luxury suites and amenities definitely increase the cost of a stadium, which almost always includes taxpayer money. And there are plenty of articles and opinions that say the luxury experience is ruining the average fan's experience. Others argue that similar to high rollers at a casino, big spend on luxury suites is what allows teams to keep the standard ticket price down. The reality is, these days, luxury suite revenues are a key component of a team's financial success. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to Morning Brew with notifications on so you know every time we drop a new video.